Hello, hello, and this is Mazza Mashia from Percolation Gaming, and today we are bringing you another Man vs. Machine tutorial, but this time in the flavor of our friendly little Scout. Now, Scout's kind of an interesting class, as it has a little benefit to it, where if you die, you instantly respawn. No having to buy your way back in, or anything like that, really. And then there's the matter of your speed. So that speed obviously has to come with some sort of roll attached to it, since not many people can move that fast. Well, I guess with the exception of rocket jumping and sticky jumping, but that comes with a price, so let's just kind of exclude that for the moment. Now, when it comes to scout, your role is generally just going to be harass, 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 and then picking up the cash. Since you're generally going to be in the fray of things, you should always be collecting cash in some way. Especially since it kind of helps you win, you know? Everyone needs upgrades, not just you. It's a good way to go about things. Now unlike in traditional gameplay, you don't really need to go all kinds of crazy with movements. You know, jumping back and forth and back and forth around in circles around enemies. I mean, these are bots. They're going to be tracking you regardless of what crazy antics you involve yourself in when it comes to jumping. No matter what you do, you're probably going to get hit. So just kind of stay back and generally just stay off the ground if you're being shot at in some way. Don't need to do any crazy jumps to survive. So another thing that comes in hand is aiming. Aiming is obviously your friend. Now, when I play Man vs. Machine and there are other scouts, I see some scouts that are just so lazy that they seriously do nothing but come into a game and melee and then collect cash and think that's acceptable. It's really not. I mean, you are not the only class that will be collecting cash in the first place. Any other up in per close and personal class is going to be doing that as well. So don't just come into a game and think that by simply meleeing you're doing a service to your team. You're not. Now let's talk about the upgrades that you should be getting. They're pretty straightforward really. I mean you just want to make sure that you're getting reload speed and then damage. Those are pretty important. As is firing speed, I mean, by the end of the game, you should be putting some insane damage out there. Seriously. Scout, be broken. It's pretty nice. Then there are other upgrades that you should consider as well, such as if you like the Sandman, it does come with a few nifty upgrades that you should consider getting, such as like being able to shoot multiple balls and faster recharge rate on that instead of just kind of shooting one and using it about three, four times around. So do consider using that. It's a very nice item. Unfortunately, I couldn't really display any cool items because this map, unfortunately, was not connected to the Steam server, so you know how that goes. No item layout at all, and that, unfortunately, even can includes canteens. It was quite a disappointment. As was this entire game, really, but I digress. When it comes to guns, I mean, I personally just prefer the default shotgun over anything. It, it does all kinds of miracles for me. The other ones are pretty okay, but mm, preference, really. There is no straight upgrade for virtually any class, all just side grades and preference. Now when it comes to the pistol, uh, I would actually really recommend just getting the Mad Milk. It's really nice to have. You can improve the recharge rate just like any other kind of consumable item like that. Able to heal yourself, you can by the time it's max, you can throw it out really fast. I think it's like a 5-7 second cooldown by the time you're done with it or something, so you're just throwing that at virtually any enemy, period. Really helpful stuff. Also, it's good to note that if you see a sniper, since you're so speedy, you should go and kill the sniper. 
Snipers can two-shot your team members regardless of what kind of sniper they are, how far the round has really progressed. They will most likely two-shot you. Take care of them, for both you and your team's sake, please. Now I know a lot of people get distracted by the tank when it comes to like the little tank rounds, but do try and focus at least a little bit on where the bomb is and how you should be containing it. You have all this mobility, make sure you utilize it in some proper fashion. And generally you can do that with relative ease just by simply running around the map and killing things. I mean, it's just like traditional gameplay, really. You're so fast that you can be harassing a lot of different people at a lot of different times. So you definitely want to do that. And here we have another sniper. Gotta kill him. Those guys are evil. Wave is down, the pyro has died, and all is well in the land. Now what about scout upgrades for yourself? Well, they aren't really too useful. Even the resistances won't really save you all that much. I mean, if you're dying a lot, invest just maybe one point in whatever is killing you the most. Whether it be projectile damage or just pyros killing at you. Whichever. Though realistically, with a Mad Milk, you should not be dying to fire damage. Just throw that down at yourself and extinguish yourself. Be sure to do the same for your teammates as well. They will thank you. They will love you, even if they do not say it. Just know that by the end of the night, they are thinking about you and how great you are. Help your teammates. So with all these descriptions going off, you can probably kind of tell that Scout is just kind of like a support role in this, really. You can do an awesome amount of damage by the time the game is virtually over, and even before then, you can still pump out a lot of awesome damage with the scattergun. Close-up shotgun blasts hurt anything, even these gigantic robots without hearts and souls. The tank, though, not so much. Like any other class, just melee it down. It's the way to victory, and it'll make things just so much easier for you. Melee them down. Another set that might be worth checking out is also just the Little Milkman set. I mean, since you should be using the Mad Milk in the first place, I mean, pepper shotting people with that awesome little gun probably wouldn't be that bad an idea considering the upgrades that you can attach to it. Though it does require you to be just a little bit more close and personal with your enemies, I don't think that would be too big an ordeal, really. You should have plenty of survivability in order to survive getting that close. Especially with how inaccurate the bots seem to be. They aim at where you are and not so much where you will be. So thankfully, we don't have to worry about bots lead shotting or anything like that. It's pretty much just knowing how they fire and then avoiding getting shot by things that just really aren't meant for you. I don't know about you, but I find a lot of my deaths or either from me making a mistake, of course, because I'm not perfect. Or I'm simply dying the shots that just were not meant for me in the first place. Such as getting shot by something that was meant for the pyro near me, or something near a sentry gun, or what have you. So just kind of be aware of what's around you. Just situational awareness, really. Pretty universal. Now as for canteens, you should probably just stick with either the uber if you're dying a lot, but preferably probably just crits. You really should not be dying so much to the point where you feel that you need that extra four seconds to survive in order to get anything done. You have the mad milk to get your HP back, you have the speed in order to just kind of run away to a health kit that isn't too far away from you, there's really no reason not to get it. Another thing I think we should discuss is probably upgrade priority. Now since you can run so fast, and Scattergun, I mean really, it has a nice ammo capacity 
on its own, and the clip size is actually pretty nice. So just kind of leave that alone, really. It's kind of like a lazy upgrade. I mean, if you want to get that, you should probably save it until the end of the match. What will really make a difference right away, even more so than the damage, would be your reload firing. I mean, that will make an insane difference, because everyone knows how slow that scattergun reload is. It's actually kind of aggravating. Now, since we bought something last round, we didn't really have any money in order to buy things this round. So we just kind of skip to the action, get in the nitty gritty, and it is time to throw down. Thankfully, even from long ranges, we still do a fairly decent amount of damage that won't get us instantly killed by rockets. The worst enemy. And thankfully again, they do not lead shot, like any other bot, so you're pretty much safe from that. So aside from reload speed, it should probably be at least a point or two in health on kill. Those should probably be your first points, actually. One in reload speed and then one in health on kill. I mean, that'll make a drastic difference by itself right there. Does not get any better than that. After you have those up a decent way, like probably two points on health and kill, and maybe two to four on reload speed, just focus on firing rate. After you get that down, you should probably start focusing on damage. Though, if you're feeling like it, you should also probably consider getting ammo penetration at probably the third round. Possibly even the second. It's really helpful, obviously. Your scattergun does an insane amount of damage as it is. And then since everyone is generally clumped together, you can just further increase that damage that you do. And it's just really nice. Upgrade your Mad Milk at your leisure. Same with the Sandman if you decide to use it. I mean, it's, they don't really cost that much. I believe it's like 250 in upgrade, so it's not too large a deal, really. It'll save your life. It'll save your team. It is definitely the way to go. Also, if you're an engineer, don't put a teleporter there. I mean, why would you not just put it near your base? That's just absurd. I mean, you have to run like 10 seconds forward just to take a teleporter. Why? What's the sense in that? Here, I'll answer for you. It makes no sense. Don't do it. To the point where it's just pretty much faster to walk there myself. Another upgrade path you can consider is probably movement speed or health regen, since your health as a scout is obviously really low. Though if you do have the milkman set, that'll kind of help you a little bit. I mean, every little bit helps, especially when you have health that low. And you're such a vulnerable kind of glass cannon class. Outside of that, there isn't really much else to the scout. Be aware of your situations, what's near you, what's going on near you. Don't get peppered by bullets that aren't really meant for you. Stick to reload speed and firing rate. Get some ammo penetration, health on kill, and then focus on damage. I mean, look at how fast I am shooting and reloading right now. It's kind of ridiculous. Within a few seconds, you can you don't even really have to worry about taking forever like it normally would to get a full clip going on. Now, unfortunately, on this map, we do not win. And before we even get to try again, the server times out. How terrible is that? I mean, that's such bad luck. Oh well, what can you do, I guess? So after you get all that nice stuff going on, it's pretty much just time to go to town on the robots. Unfortunately, the heavy champs, being the champions they are, they just take 
way too much of a beating. And here we go. Major League Scout finishes the job for us and we die. This has been Maz Mashia from Percolation Gaming giving you our scout tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Let's tune in next time for our next video.